welcome to coffee with uh, Cole Jefferson, an American filmmaker uh, whose film Mašem iz Amerike, koji je čije film američka fikcija prikazan u Open Air programu. On je osvojio Oscara za najbolji scenar, glavužen scenar, ima više od 50 nagrada za taj film. Hvala što ste s nama danas. Možda bi sam vas mogla također naviti kao pjevača, s obzirom da ste sinoć pjevali. Ko vas je naučio bosansku pjesmu? Ako su to samo bile laži. Ne znam kako bi vam to prevela na engleski. Ja sam odrastao sa mnogo bliskih prijatelja iz Sarajeva u Taksonu, Arizoni, odakle dolazim i zadnji put kad sam došao ovdje, bio sam u Sarajevu, ja mislim, 2011. ili 2012. To je bilo zadnji put i ta pjesma je bila na radiju i svi smo je pjevali i naučili su me riječi. I od tada mi je nešto što stalno slušam na Spotify-u i kad sam u Americi. Ovaj jedan od najbolji prijatelj je rekao da moram da mu to otpjevam i ja sam mu to dugovao da mu otpjevam i bilo mi je drago da mu otpjevam to. Trebala se naučiti pjesmu Suada, ta je više popularna. Imate veze sa Sarajevom, ovdje ste sa prijateljima koji su vas upoznali s našom kulturom, pored toga iznađenja sa pjevanjem. Ima jedna interesantna scena u američkoj fikciji koja me iznenadila prije mjesec dana kad sam gledala taj film i žiri odlučuje ko će dobiti nagradu za najbolju novelu i onda na tabli možemo vidjeti listu na naslova i tu je i novela Auto puno bosanaca. O čemu se radi? Je li to neki film katastrofe? Ne, Auto puno bosanaca. Opet ja sam odrastao sa grupom bosanaca i Auto puno bosanaca je bio band moja četiri prijatelja u srednjoj školi. Oni su se tako zvali Auto puno bosanaca. Možete to probuglati i potušati na internetu, jako su dobri. To je bila čisto referenca. To su bendovi, svi ti naslovi, knjiga su bendovi mojih prijatelja iz srednje škole i auto puno bosanaca je tu. Drago mi je da ste to primijetili. Neki ljudi to nisu primijetili. Imam dobro oko. Film Američka fikcija je satrična komedija o rasizmu u američkoj kulturi sa Jeffrey Wrightom, briljantnim Jeffrey Wrightom. Sve je počelo sa knjigom da vidimo kako je to krenulo od ideje do Oscara za najbolje adaptirani scenarij. Što je bio kidać za vas da odlučite da ta priča jeste savršena, da bude vaš debi kao režisera? Pa... Film je adaptiran iz jedne novele od Everetta, autora. Ne znam da li je imao takvo iskustvo, ali ja sam pročitao tu novelu u novembru 2022. I činilo se kao da je to knjiga napisana baš za mene, kao da je neko sjeo i napisao meni knjigu na poklon, toliko sam se povezao sa njom. Karakter ima dva brata, i ja to imam i često kao srodnici imate upravo takvu odnos, takav odnos. Majka mi je umrla prije osam godina od raka, ja sam joj pomagao, veselio sam se kod nje i karakter je to isto slično uradio. On ima tu oca također koji je bio snažna figura, također se radi o crnom piscu koji živio u San Jose kao što i ja radim i u suštini sam sve više imao osjećaj kao da čitam svoju životnu priču i ključ za adaptaciju je bio da se nađe u materijalu nešto što stvarno vama direktno, lično govori na ličnom nivou sa čim se fundamentalno možete povezati, razumijeti i dosta adaptacija tako Često izgledaju bez strasti jer ljudi adaptiraju stvari zato što je nešto popularno u drugom mediju, a ideja je jako... Ok, to je bila popularna knjiga prije 30 godina, zašto ne bio popularan film danas? 
Pa mislim, for me, da za mene, what I really saw was just something that ja made me feel nešto, passionate about it. And I knew that 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 na tako dubokom nivou. Tako da sam se obratio autoru i pitao da li mogu dobiti prava na adaptaciju knjige. On mi je dao besplatno prava šest mjeseci da napišem scenarij i onda je rekao ako nešto nastane iz toga možeš mi platiti kada završiš. Ja sam za četiri mjeseca napravio scenarij. Prilično sporo pišem, ali kad sam završio naši smo producente koji su to htjeli brzo snimiti. I godinu dana kasnije smo već snimali na ljeto 2022. Ono što smo vidjeli u filmu jeste anksioznost koja je prisutna u pisanju svakog autora. Prošle godine na istom mjestu sam imala razgovor sa legendarnim američkim scenaristom Charlie M. Kaufmanom. O, ozbiljno. On mi je heroj, obožavam ga. Ovdje je bio prošle godine. Izvanredno, ne. Dakle, imala sam razgovor sa njim. I razmišljam o adaptaciji, o filmu adaptacija također je priča o psihološkim borbama, pisa i disfunkcionalnim porodicama. Da li ste vi imali takvih problema s anksioznošću sa svojom kreativnošću, kao što smo to vidjeli u, recimo, onoj izvedbi Nikola Sakeđa adaptaciji? Da, da, to je bilo i smiješno u tom filmu. Da, mislim da je taj film odličan. I to mi je bila i inspiracija. Da, mislim da jedan od razloga zašto zaista volim Charlie Kaufmana i njegove filmove jeste zato što su također napisani na taj anksiozni način i ja mogu osjećati empatiju s tim. I mislim također da je taj film vezan za ranjivost kada pravimo nešto, kada se izložite kao umjetnik. Umjetnost nije nešto što radi vojnik u slučaju, ali kada svoj rad koji je veoma ličan izložite, predstavite svima je zaista strašno, bilo ko koji je napisao poemu, priču, film, glumio je, mislim da se osjeća tako, to su stvari koje traže jedan element stvarne ranjivosti, stvarnog straha za mene, i mislim... I think that somebody like Charlie Kaufman in that film, I think, particularly captured what it feels like to be a writer for me. Da, neko poput Charlie Kaufmana u posnutom filmu je zaista prikazao kako to izgleda kada ste pisac. It's always a little scary, but it's also the only thing that I really like to do. So I think that every time that I write something new, it is sort of like a new experience. It's always 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 a new experience. Jedan skok u nepoznato i nadam se da će ljudi uživati u tome. I mislim da svaki umjetnik mora biti takav umjetnosti, moraju biti otporni. Ja to često kažem za umjetnike, to je to jer mislim, pored talenta, Talent je fina stvar, neki ljudi imaju više talenta nego drugi, ali mislim da talent nije ono što dovede do dobre karijere u umjetnosti. Često ljudima kažu ne i odbiju ih više puta, kažu im da su njihove ideje loše, a oni ipak sljedeći dan opet žele nešto napisati. Mislim da oni na kraju pobjeđuju ta aksioznost, ta nervoza oko te forme umjetnosti je razumljiva, ali mislim također da ljudi koji mogu graditi karijeru umjetnosti, kreativnosti, oni su ti koji prevaziđu tu aksioznost i taj strah kako bi rekli ono što trebaju da kažu svijetu. Pored aksioznosti, još jedna sličnost adaptaciju vaše filmu Američka fikcija je također da se stvari završe u tom razmaku između realnosti i fikcije. Da li to ima neku posljednu poruku za vas, poruka vašeg filmu? Danas svi živimo život gdje nema baš razlike između realnosti i fikcije, da imamo tu ispletenost. 
I mean, I think that that's da. not. The, I wouldn't say that that's the ne point of the film. Ne bih baš rekao da je film, ali definitivno. A theme that you could take away from it. I think that the, the title and the idea of fiction for me is more about this idea that. Ta. Um, <coughs> it was so, so a it's a pun it's a book pun it's american fiction right? it's the idea of the bookstore pun that you might see a, a, a heading for american fiction in a bookstore but i think puns are the lowest form of humor so it would be more than that and so the, the, to me, the fiction of it is that the, the vast majority of scientists in the world right, will tell you that the idea of race is not real the texture of our hair, the color of our skin, the width of our nose these kinds of, sort of like nosa, boja, small differences are pretty negligible when it comes to the actual broader humanity that we're also far more like on a, on a DNA level than we are, than we are different. Um, and yet we structure manje. our world to suggest Međutim, that naš race is real. Tako da so, um, da je rasa um, and so you know, the consequences of race are real. You have racism and you sort of have all these things that are real despite the fact that race itself is not real. And so there's, <coughs> there's an inherent tension between those two things that I think makes for great comedy because it's sort of, we are, um, we're all trying to make this thing that is fake exist and we're all trying to sort of like understand it on these as if it is real and, and it's kind of like a figment of our imagination that we are constantly operating in the world to try to make real and so to me that's the absurdity there is, is, is funny and I think it's sort of the absurdity there is important to point out and so to me that, that, was, the, that was what the fiction the title was referencing was this and I think that you know, racial politics are different everywhere and so I think that there's a part of American racism that feels different from racial discussions elsewhere in the world um, and so for me that was, that was the fiction that I was more attempting to get at was this idea that um, this idea that you know Monk in the, in the film is dealing with this idea that um, as a black writer there's a very a limited perspective as to what people think that he can write. You know, he's a guy who's interested in doing um, telling of like classical literature and classical Greek theater. And that's what he loves to do, but people frequently want him to write about poverty and slavery and gangs and drugs and all of those stereotypical things that people think populate black Americans and in fact none of that really životu na crnaca, ništa od toga nije u njegovom životu. On je jedno ljudsko biće sa više slojeva, kao i svako drugo ljudsko biće i želi pisati nešto što to pokazuje. To su lijevitosti. To je meni ta fikcija. Taj čovjek koji želi živjeti svoj život, koji je kompleksan i dubok kao i bilo čiji drugi, ali zbog te fikcije, ideje rase i ideje toga šta znači znači biti crncem, on ne može da prođe kroz te ograničenja koja mu ljudi postavlja. Pitala sam vas o fikciji zato što ste bili novinar, tako da imate punu sliku o stereotipima i ograničenjima koja ne postoje između fikcije i realnosti više. Ako smijem reći o američkoj kulturi, više ne znate šta je reality show show, a šta je stvarnost na određen način. Da kažemo nešto o priči vašeg filma. Pretpostavljam da ste vidjeli film publiko Sinoć u američkoj fikciji, Monk je talentirani, ali komercijalno neuspješan američki pisac. Frustrira ga uspjeha mladih crnih pisaca koji on vidi da pišu knjige koji su stereotipni, marketinški i promoviraju stereotipe od crncima. On je jako dobar performansa. Izredba ovog glumca je bila izanredna. Možete nam nešto reći o saradnji sa Jeffreyem na snimanju. Film je sniman mi smo počeli snimati 2022. ali pandemija je još uvijek bila u toku. Imali smo protokole za COVID što je činilo film još skupim 
Imali ste maske, Smiješno ga je ponekad vidjeti kad ga nešto boli. Dobro, hoćemo li govoriti malo o Oscarima? Dan Stanović, naš bosanski Oscarovac, je bio ovdje. Jučer je bio tu i ja sam ga pitala šta se promijenilo od te dodjele Oscara. Da li ste vi sada u poziciji da možete raditi šta? Ne, ne, ne. Ne, 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 Hrvatski kandidat za Oscara. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It could be Bosnian as well. Evo tu je režiser, kao mogao biti i bosanski. It's a really beautiful movie. And so I was talking to you about this last night and we were, you know, Govorio sam sa njim o tome sinoć i My life has certainly changed a little bit. Moj život se definitivno malo promijenio. I get You know, I get I get fancy I get fancier meetings now, and I sort of like get to meet actors that I probably wouldn't have been able to meet before. And I get to meet actors that I probably wouldn't have met before. But I can't, you know, if there's a if there's an idea that I can't do whatever I want, but at this point, like having all this power, that's sort of not the case. I think that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that I said in my Oscar speech was that you know, the one of the things that Film nakon ljeta, taj film u poređenju sa američkim filmovima je zaista jeftin film. I mislim da je jako lijep da će živjeti kroz vrijeme i ne trebam 150 miliona da napravite dobru priču koja će dodirnuti ljude, rezonirati s njima. Nažalost, mislim da američka kinetografija se vodi profitom. To je razlog 
you know, this festival doesn't seem so driven by transactional, it's not sort of like we're here to buy and sell and sort of do, like, make business connections and things like that, the way that some film festivals do. Uh, this one feels just like actually about celebrating the art, and I think that that is, unfortunately, um, nažalost, something that America has yet to sort of like catch up America on that I think European cinema understands. You know, there's, my friend, I have a couple of razumije. French uh, director Imam friends and they were telling me this thing that I didn't know until a couple of years ago, which is that when, when um, big films like Marvel movies and whatnot Marvel play in France, there's a special tax that they put on those movies that then sort of like, like funnels into this fund for French directors to make like more artistic films and sort of like to, to kind of do things that would otherwise go on funded. And I think that that, you know, that kind of that kind of idea is, I think, wonderful. And I think it sort of suggests that, you know, I think that we sort of like forget in America sometimes that, that art is art is good. Art for art's sake is good. Aside from business, it makes your society better. It makes people smarter. It makes people more empathetic. Um, and it, it entertains people, at least on sort of like a very basic level. And I think that... Um, to me, we, we sort of have forgotten that, and I think that uh, it's really important for us to get back to a place where we realize that, like, just because something doesn't make $500 million doesn't mean it's not worth your time, doesn't mean it's not worth investing, it doesn't mean it's not worth um, um, investing in these new voices who have things to say. So, yeah, I think that, unfortunately, it has changed my life in some ways, certainly, but um, I think that there's still, you know, in, in many ways, American cinema is still very profit-driven, um, it's still very much a business, and I think that uh, it's not like I can just walk in and wave a magic wand and say, I want to do this now. There's still a lot of people who, who have to say yes in order for me to do that. What was the budget of the American film? Less than $10 million. Less than $10 million. Yeah. It was millions of dollars less than $10 million. If only Anja and Danis had that amount of money. Only Anja and Danis had that amount of money. Okay, uh, I noticed uh, the sort of silence that followed this Primitla film, and uh, it's film. very true, it made at the Oscars. It is I interesting. Uh, somehow Oscar everyone expected that, uh, that Oscar would go to the Oscars, so Oscar Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer or Barbie, or Anatomy of a Fall films, so with a huge promotion. Uh, film of us, uh, ogromnom promotion of a Fall film. You, you came in silence and took it home. You came in silence and took it home. You came in silence and took it home. Anatomy of a Fall did win Best Screenplay, I'll say that. Pa I, didn't, I won Best Adapted, but they won Best Screenplay, and I love that movie. I think it's incredible. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that that, but, you know, that, that is, I think, a testament to the ability of smaller films sometimes. To je zaista se dočasilo da mali filmovi imaju mogućnost neka da se probiju. You know, surprise people. I think that that was, you know, we, when we made this movie, we made it under very little auspices, you know, we didn't, we didn't have, uh, you know, I love Jeffrey, um, I, I think that, but it's not like sort of like we had like you know these big Marvel stars and sort of like this, you know, the cast is incredible but um, I, I think that you know it, what, nobody was like a guaranteed bankable star if that even exists anymore uh, the film itself is not you know it's a little left of center it's not sort of like super easy material it's, it's, not, it's not something that's going to be for everybody we didn't set out to make something that was going to be for everybody. You know, we just set out to make something that we were really passionate about. And that we felt was, was important to talk about. And so, to me, that's always the best way to enter the thing, is just to enter it because you feel passionately about it. I think that we all have probably seen films that you can see nobody, nobody has, is passionate about it. They're there because they're cash and paycheck, and it sort of worked for them, and that's fine. Everybody has to work and feed themselves. Um, but I sort of, I don't think that I ever want to get into the world where I'm just doing, doing something like this to cash a paycheck. I think that you have to be, I mean, at least for me, film is such, you know, these are things that take years of, and years of time, and you have to sort of work on them really hard for a significant portion of your life, and if you're doing that on something that you don't love, that you're not passionate about, I, I don't know, I would lose my mind. So I, I think that, 
we uh, I'm, I'm really proud of the film I'm really ja, proud of, 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 uh, film, of uh, uh, you know the, the way that we were able to break through and na sort of compete so with probiti, much bigger films with much bigger marketing budgets and I think that you know, marketing. I really, I really appreciate the support that we got from people who came out to see the movie and then spread, spread the word via film word of mouth and told their friends and family that they needed to go see it. Um, Donis actually told me last night that he, he didn't want to watch the movie. Donis told me last night didn't want to watch the movie. Donis told me last night that he didn't want to watch the movie. Nam se pridružiti. Donis said that he, uh, he didn't want to, he initially felt, he initially hated the title. So he said like American fiction, I don't want to watch American fiction. And eventually he wanted to watch it. And then uh, he said he finished watching it. And then he said he told his five children that they needed to see it. And he told his wife that she needed to see it. And I think that that is, you know, and I'm going to go tell people that they should see My Late Summer. I think that that is, um, I think that when you really put your heart in something, put emotion in something, people are going to feel that, and they're going to sort of try to help you as, as much as possible in talking about it and telling people about it. So I do think that, um, you know, the passion that people have for the film is the passion that we have for the film, and it did help us, um, it helped keep us buoyant and sort of like the, in the tide of the war. We're talking about all these other massive movies, like the Oppenheimer like which are great films, Oppenheimer, you know, Barbie, we certainly, we certainly filmovi, couldn't compete with them when it comes to, to spending power. Uh, could we perhaps uh, also analyze the Oscars as the political correct? Uh, because those films that those are politically correct, because those films that are apartheid, robstvu, americkih, Crnaca, Afrikoamerikanaca često dobiju nagrade posebno kada govorimo o recimo zelenoj knjizi Selmi, mjesečini, 12 godina robstva. Možemo li govoriti o Oscarima kao jednoj nagradi koja ističe političku preka? Ne bih to rekao da je na Oscarima. Mislim da je jedna od tema u američkoj fikciji, recimo u mom filmu, da je to kultura. Američka kultura nisu to Oscari neophodno. It's what people decide to make. It's not, you know, the key. I think that one of the one of the frustrating things about being a black writer in Hollywood is the expectation that you know, I'm there to write slave movies. I'm there to write about drug addicts. I'm there to write about gang members. And it doesn't actually pertain at all to my reality. My life doesn't look like that. The expectation that that's what I understand when I write about slavery. But that's what, you know, that's what the studios want to make. That's the, that's, those are the they feel comfortable telling about, about uh, black people. Those are the stories that they feel comfortable assigning to black writers and black directors. They, there's a very limited perspective as to what they think our lives look like and what we're interested in. So I think that um, it's sort of, I feel like the, the sort of, you know, the issue isn't sort of necessarily, and it's not even, I don't even blame the people who write these kinds of films. You know, I think that people often say, like, are you upset? And that's one of the things I think Monk is dealing with in the, in the film is that, as you said, he has this kind of rival who's a black woman who writes books about the inner city, writes books about poverty and drugs and, you know, single mothers and, and he has a problem with that. He thinks that she's kind of debasing herself and debasing her culture by doing this. And I think that the way that I would look at that actually is that, you know, I used to have this kind of resentment toward black writers who would do that kind of stuff. I sort of found myself thinking, like, why are they doing this? Why is that what's popular? Why is that sort of, why is that what everybody wants to hear? And is it sort of like kind of embarrassing to do that? And I realized that, you know, a big step in my creative life and sort of like a real learning moment for me was when I realized that, you know, the reason that those people are writing those things is because that's what people are buying. And it's hard to be an artist. It's difficult. It's expensive. You know, you don't make a lot of money. You're sort of like people are struggling to pay themselves. And so I think that when you see that that's what the creative community is asking for, then that's what you'll write to sell because you want to find some success and you need to get paid and keep a roof over your head. And so I actually realized that I don't resent those people for their work. 
work, they're just doing what people are expecting that's okay. So I think that the, the, the real question, the better question is why, why are the people who run film studios, why are they so desperate to tell slavery stories all the time about black people, people who buy um, um, publishing books, books, why are they so desperate to talk about slavery and sort of like the inner city of the world being a black person a native to black or something, why is that a more interesting story to you than the millions of other stories you tell about black Americans? And I think that, so the problem I think, you know, the Oscars are just part of sort of like a bigger cultural issue and the Oscars, the Oscars, you know, give awards to films that are made and the films that are made, which are so happy to be a lot of films about black trauma and black trauma. su velikim dijelom ljudi o traumi crnaca, tragedi crnaca, što opet ne odslikava veliki broj života crnaca. Mislim da fokusiranje na Oscare je pogrešno mjesto za fokus. Treba se fokusirati na izvor svega toga, a izvor svega toga su ljudi koji vode te kompanije. Da se prebacimo na pitanja publike, moramo poštovati vrijeme televizije. Da vidimo ovdje. Gospodža u zelenoj haljini. Samo sačkajte mikrofon i molim, predstavite se prije nego što postavite pitanje. Hvala vam. I'm Ra Christiansen from Sweden, Svedske internet media ENCI. Prije svega, hvala vam. Želim vas pitati kako vidite budućnost za filmsku industriju internacionalno. Some people think that I'm crazy, but I'm a huge optimist. I'm a huge optimist. I think that we are... I think that I won't go into it so deeply because I've I will, I will talk to to for hours and we don't have time for this. Atima, tome, I, think that, zato, um, I think people are really in the mood for authenticity. I think sort of we, we have been through, you know, uh, the past couple decades that feel, I think, like we left the sort of like, you know, the 90s when we had all these auteurs coming up and like Tarantino and sort of like Spike Lee's making great films, Scorsese, and they had this sort of like, like a man, like they had this really sort of like wonderful, um, like explosion of creativity in the 90s and I think that sort of 2000s came around and it was a lot of, you know, I think that You know, the comic book movie kind of took over American culture, sort of really dominated for a very long time. I think that now, not to say that, not to say that superheroes are bad necessarily, but I just think that people are starting to use the internet for something else. I think that people are starting to use the internet for something else. I think that people are starting to use the internet for something else. That's why you're seeing the rise of companies like A24, the rise of companies like Neon, A24, the rise of companies like Neon, the rise of companies like Neon, the rise of companies like režiserima, čudnim filmovima, ako nemamo bolji rič za to, mislim da je strana kinematografija uvijek bila bolja od američke, jer kao što sam već rekao, bila je tu ideja toga da se radi umjetnost, radi umjetnost ne samo radi profita u Americi, na sreću se čini kao da se malo ta plima okreće da ljudi That's one of the reasons why I sort of am pretty optimistic about AI. Razumiješ što? Drugo i zato sam također sad optimističan i sa. I've yet to see like any piece of AI art that anybody actually feels passionately about. I think I've yet to see anything that AI has made that people love as much as anything that AI has made. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is made for human beings. It's always something that is Nešto što možete zamijeniti kao neki trik, to je interesantno, naravno, kao da pas žonglira sa lopticom, to je interesantno, tako da sam mislim zaista optimistično da će se ljudi okrenuti ovim manjim pričama, pričama koje se zaista angažiraju sa ljudskim bićima na osnovnom nivou, na emocionalnom nivou, umjesto da se samo kaže evo spektakl, evo neki 
And I think that, that we're feeling that right now. Mislim da to zaista sad već osjećamo. Ja zaista imam nade za budućnost. I kada dođemo ovdje vidim toliko filmaša iz cijelog svijeta koji rade na takvim projektima, ne sa 150 milijona dolara, već sa budžetima koji su puno manji, koji pričaju lične, intimne priče. To mi zaista daje dodatni optimizam. Ali film je već na internetu, internacionalno zbog kratstva. For the film to be seen. I to je jedan dobar način da se film vidi. Sljedeće pitanje. Ja sam Ada iz Slovenije. Samo sam se pitala, možda je ovo malo široko pitanje, ali kako pristupate pisanju, adaptaciji scenarija, kako svoje ideje ubacujete, osnovite lojalni knjizi i je li vam to uopšte ideja? Sa drugim pitanjem ste zaista na point i zaista pogađate tačno. Mislim da moramo da razumijemo da adaptacija jeste to što jeste, nije to direktna kopija, to je adaptacija onoga što je ispred vas i napravite nešto drugo. Napravite jednu drugu stvar, to me se posvećujete, zaista sam bio inspiran. I also knew that the movie that I wanted to make was going to be different from the original. You know, the book itself. I love the book. 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 Već zato što sam mislio da to nije nešto što ja želim. I zbog toga što sam mislio da ako želim adaptirati knjigu, u potpunosti to bi bilo 3,5 sata filma sa 100 miliona dolara. Morate raditi u ograničenjima koja imate. Mislim da je ključ, ono što sam već ranije rekao, morate naći nešto što vama zaista govori, ići s tim. Ako vam nešto ne govori direktno, ok, odbacite to jer vi radite adaptaciju. Ne morate napraviti direktnu kopiju onoga što već postoji i pokušate dodati nešto novo priči koja već postoji. Autor mi je bio savršen saradnik, mi je dao materijal, prava na materijal i pročitao je prvi nacrt scenarija, vidio prvu verziju filma, bio je zaista podrška u cijelom procesu i nikad nije davao kreativne savje. Često bih rekao, sviđa mi se to, sviđa mi se što praviš, praviš nešto što mi se čini originalnim i specifičnim za tebe, to mi je knjiga. I ta podrška koju sam imao od njega mi je mnogo značila, to je savršena... Savršeni odnos sa nekim čiju knjigu adaptirate. Koji je proces teži? Pisanje vlastite, originalne priče ili pravljenje adaptacije postojeće? Mislim da moram reći pisanje originalne priče je teže, anksioznije. Mislim da adaptacija je teška na mnogo načina, ali opet koristite neke ideje koje su već tu. Mislim da kod originalnog scenarija sve morate na novo morate napraviti izmisliti. Meni se čini teži da pisati originalnu ideju nego adaptirati nešto. Dobro, sljedeće pitanje. Mladi ljudi su vrijedni sa posljednjem pitanja ovdje. Ja sam Jakov iz Bosne i Hercegovine, iz Hercegovine je tačnije. Moje pitanje je, pošto ste pomenuli blockbustere, Marvelove filmove specifično, da li biste ikad razmislili o tome da napravite takav film, film koji bi mogao biti blockbuster, koji se bavi konceptima, kao što je adaptacija stripova, superheroja. Da, apsolutno. Ja sam radio na adaptaciji stripova. Pisao sam za seriju Watchmen, radio sam adaptaciju stripova. Nisam protiv toga 
I'm just kao ideje, više sam that, protiv um, when it sort of when it just feels like I'm just sort of toga kada se čini da sam product, tu you know? čisto I, da prodam I said, I said comic book movies, I did not say Marvel movies. <laughs> Rekao sam stripovi, ne filmovi po stripovima, ne marmelovi. Pa možda bi Batman mogao biti crn. Izvinjam se zbog tog izraza, ali nisu mi amerikanci ovdje. Mislim da ima izrednih filmova o superhorojno sviđa, ali se to Ragnarok bio mi je zaista smiješan. Crni Panther mi je bio dobar. Joker je jako interesantan, zanima me da vidim taj nastavak, ali mislim da ono što vidite tu jeste... Taika Watiti's Um, his, uh, ono što je Taika Waititi radio je nešto gdje je očigledan njegov stil vidi se da su mu dali slobodu da on učini da to bude njegovo isto je vezano sa Crnim Panterom Todd Phillips and Joker Todd Phillips je sa Jokerom isto to uradio kad ljudi imaju priliku da te priče uzmu i urade sa njima nešto što oni žele naprave nešto originalno za njih što govor njihovim glasom zato sam zainteresiran ali za mene ono što želim raditi jeste samo skočiti na nešto zato što će biti veliko i da će mi dosta novca ali mi neće dopustiti da ispričam priču koju želim želim ispričati, već će biti stroga ograničenja u tome što želim reći. To je kao i sve ostalo. Što više noca vam ljudi daju, to će više biti kuhara u kuhinji, jer su dosta investirali. Mislim da mi je teško kod tome kada govorimo o filmu od 150 milijona, 100 milijona, to da kada sa tim radite, puno ljudi vam govori šta možete, a šta ne možete. U mojoj karijeri gdje sam napravio samo jedan film, to je tako, znam da bi imao mnogo šefova koji bi mi rekli ne smiješ to, ne smiješ to reći, ne smiješ ovo iskoristiti, moraš promijeniti tu šalu. I kad to počnete raditi, onda to razvodni umjetnost za mene. Nemam problem s tim filmovima što se prave, nemam problema što ih ljudi prave. Da, možda bi bio zainteresan da ih napravim jedan dan, ali samo ako imam slobodu da stvarno ispričam priču koja je meni važna, a ne samo nekome koje je tu da kaže rez, ok, šef mi kaže da idemo dalje, da je to u redu. Ali već ste radili na produkcijama sa visokim budžetom, bar koliko se sjećam, Watchmen, serija na HBO je imala, je serija sa velikim budžetom, definitivno. A to je imalo i također jednu liniju povezanu ja nisam kreirao tu seriju, samo sam bio pisac, samo pisac, a kako skromno. Damon Lindelof's baby, Damon's a good friend of mine and a mentor of mine at this point. To je jedan drugi Damon, gospod Damon koji mi je dobar prijatelj već u ovom trenutku, on je to kreirao, ali Watchmen i kao serija su mi se činili kao serija gdje nam je Inge bio pustio da radimo čudne stvari sa tim stripom, sa tim intelektualnim vlasnim, što mi je bilo interesantno ispričati tu priču koju mnogo ljudi nije očekivalo na osnovu tog materijala. Opet, sloboda da se ispriča interesantna priča naspram toga da se kaže želim raditi na stvarima vezanim za stripove ili ne to nije toliko bitno samo želim ispričati interesantne priče i jedinstvene priče sljedeće pitanje ruka gore molim vas a here are Hi, my name is Eddie. I'm from ja Norway, uh, but I'm of Bosnian descent. I'm here for the Ali festival, of course. Uh, I would like festivala. to say that uh, I went, went to your master class yesterday, and I found it quite inspiring, the way you inspirajući, talked about uh, originally not feeling like a person who could direct a movie and 
se na početku niste osjećali kao osoba kako mogla režirati film, a uspjeli ste, čestitam vam na tome. Mene je jedno praktično pitanje više. Kako uspjevate da upravljate svojim vremenom kad pišete? Koliko je važna rutina kod pisanja? Da li morate biti vrijedni osoba? Is comfortable with both writing alone and teams and working in groups, or is it more uh, lonely work in your, to više in your room? Yeah. Na samo ili u grupi. Dobra Eddie. pitanja. Uh, Eddie. So uh, I always say that ja diligence is key for me. To I always I hate vrijedni, the term writer's block. Right? Because I'm like, like onaj, uh, termin, don't get teacher's block. block. Učitelji nemaju blok učitelja, ljudi koji pravi kafu, bariste, nemaju blok pravljenju kafe. Samo mi pričamo o tome kao pisci. Učitelji nemaju blok učitelja jer mi je to posao i oni to tretiraju kao posao. Nije to neka akademska stvar gdje vam muza mora doći i reći nešto da uradite svoj posao. Ne, morate raditi svoj posao. Ako vi je posao pisanja, da tretirajte to kao posao. Ustanite u 8 sati i idite na posao, kao što to i drugi radi. Ustanu u 8 sati i to je to. Ne možeš to tretirati kao... Mrzim stvari kad ljudi govore na taj način. Ja pokušavam da pišem svaki dan. Mislim, Ljudima zovu u ljudima, ali generalno imam četiri, pet otvorenih nacrta, projekata u svako vrijeme, jer tako ako sam na mjestu gdje zaista nisam više inspiriran sa jednim projektom, onda kažem, ok, pa ima još nekako sati, možda idem raditi na nečim drugom, to mi je posao, moram to tretirati kao svoj posao, stalno piše, mislim da morate stalno pisati, stalno gledati filmove, televiziju, čitati knjige, koji god mediji da jeste vaš, morate konsumirati te stvari, i But it it also sort of Opet, do whatever makes do whatever sort of like makes you feel comfortable to do. So for me, I don't leave my bed. I wake up ja at like seven o'clock in the morning and I grab my computer and I start jutro, working computer in bed. And I'm really in the office all day. Other people like to get up and put on their clothes and sit at the desk. I think that's crazy. But you know, if that's your process, that's your process. I think, process, that, I think that whatever your writing process is, is however you get the work done, um, that's up to you. But you just need to treat it like work. Treat it like your job. Can't treat it like work. 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 Can't tre
the top of her class in law school. Like she's, she's a very accomplished individual, and so I actually think that there's a lot that she brings to the table. That has nothing to do with gender or race. I think that I also think that you know, I also think that people. I also think that people. I think Americans. Look, I don't want to speak for Americans because America is crazy right now. And I think that there's a lot of sort of like division. It, it, it is an incredibly polarized place. But I will just say that for me, how I feel about American politics is like I'm just kind of sick of thinking about it. You know, I sort of I, 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 I don't like the, the, the Trump is. Trump. I think you know I'm not going to go into a long treatise about why I don't like Trump. I think everybody should know why I don't like Trump at this point. But I think that I think that you know people are also you know you're seeing a lot of Republicans say that they're going to vote for Kamala Harris. There's I'm from Arizona. The Republican mayor of Arizona introduced Kamala and Tim Walz at their gradonačelnik je predstavio Kamalu i Tima Volca i on je rekao ja mislim da je vrijeme da stavimo zemlju na prvom mjestu umjesto politike ne možemo ponovo izabrati Donald Trumpa vidite ljude i na desnoj strani koji kažu ne možemo se više igrati ovako i izabrati ovo osobu moramo se vratiti u neku normalu ja sam opet dosta optimističan što se tiče budućnosti američke politike i mislim da bar ono čemu se ja nadam nakon izbora šta god da se desi jeste da mislim i nadam se da su amerikanci an ability to talk to talk to people who are different from them. It's sort of like that's happening around the world. I think that you're seeing a rise of a lot of sort of um, right-wing strongmen. And I think that you're seeing sort of like the divisions being sown in order to podjela da bi se ti desničarski potencijalni tirani ustoličili i opet mislim da smo dosta slični širom svijeta i vidimo da smo slični i da su to drugi amerikanci da moramo koegzistirati sa njima da bi naša zemlja uspjela i moramo prevazići te gluposti ja sam odrastao čudno okruženju moj otac je bio crni republikanac a majka je bila bila liberalka i odrastao sam imao sam tu sreću za odrastan u domaćinstvu gdje ništa nije bilo garantirano i ja sam mogao učiti šta želim to mi je bilo zaista dobro Sare sam vidio obje strane svega, ljude koji vjeruju u različite stvari koji i dalje mogu da civilizirano razgovaraju, da kažu nešto, kažu, ok, ne slažem se sa tim, s tobom, ali još uvijek te volim. Dragi gledalci, naša današnja kafa sa Port Jeffersonom je došla do kraja, televizijsko vrijeme na više ne dopušta. Hvala vam za vašu pažnju i slušajte nas i gledajte i sutra. And so, but but again, I I actually think that I actually think Kamala has a real good chance of winning, and 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 um I'm certainly going to be voting for her, uh and I think that again I don't think that it has anything to do with her her race or her gender.